52 rooms. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I meet up with my friend and former teacher, Charlene, to make a pilgrimage to the James B. Duke Mansion in Charlotte, the town where Charlene and I grew up. The Duke Mansion is now used as some sort of a conference center. It's so much smaller than it seemed when I was eight years old. I love to be here. How did you come here, Sean? I rode my bicycle over here from my house. There's a black cat in the grass. I rode my bicycle over here. I was um, lonely. My father was usually drunk, and nobody cared much where I was. And it was safe then. You know, a little girl was safe. And I would wander over here. I wouldn't wander over here. I knew I was headed for this place. It was my favorite place in the whole city. Well, would they just let you come onto the ground? Or they never saw me. I was like that black cat, you know, unless you were looking for trouble. <laughs> they didn't see me, and nobody cared. How, what my, how kind of a threat was I, an eight-year-old little girl lurking in the shrubbery, which is what I was doing. When I was little, I never got this close to the house because I was afraid of the Dukes. And I didn't know them, never did ever know them, but the stories about them and their power was intimidating. The story about Mr. Duke was that he went to the Catawba River, which is 20 or 30 miles from here, and diverted the river, changed actually the course of the river in order to put fountains in his yard. The farmers hated him because they never got rich while Buck Duke was uh, domineering and owning all of tobacco in the state. As we wander around, it does occur to me, to put it quite bluntly, that if things had gone slightly differently, this would have been all mine. I mean, I'd now be sitting on top of an enormous family fortune. Duke University would be known as McElwee University. In a way, for me, it's the worst of both fates. I mean, without reaping any of the financial rewards, I'm free to feel all the guilt I want over the fact that my great-grandfather, in helping to launch the tobacco industry down here, probably made some measurable contribution to global tobacco addiction. I started smoking when I was 13, and I smoked until I was 50 years old. At least a pack of cigarettes a day, every day. My brothers and sisters still smoke a pack of cigarettes a day. My sister Rebecca, who's 10 years younger than I am, was told by the doctors just a few weeks ago that she has a very shortened lifespan, three months, and they comforted her to say maybe three years. I don't think so, but Becky stopped drinking 10 years ago, and she substituted for that, smoking three packs of cigarettes a day, and she's killed herself. She's committed suicide with cigarettes. There have been more than Becky and my family who've committed suicide with cigarettes. I almost did it myself. Charlene and I go to see the house where I grew up, which is actually just around the corner from the Duke Mansion. I haven't seen it in years. Go back the way we came or go straight here? Uh, you gotta go to the right here. Straight, straight, straight. Yeah. Okay. And then bear right up there. Okay. Right up there. This is the house where you grew up? Yeah. In one way, I'm grateful that my family isn't still tied to the tobacco business. But in another way, I'll admit it does bother me a little that James Buck Buchanan Duke is, is an important historical figure down here, while no one remembers John Harvey McElwee. Seven. It's on the left here. Where are you going? This house? That's it. This house? That's where I grew up. Well, you, could, you certainly could have seen the Duke fountains from here. Yep. It's in your backyard. I had a very happy childhood here, Charlie. It's not but a block away. It's a little house. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful house, kind of Buck Duke's outhouse. <laughs> your fortunes were intertwined. You better do some more research on this, Ross. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>